So you, in other words, at that time, you've changed your mind, but at that time, you argued that uh, leave the criticism of this parapsychology research to other researchers, in, right. you know, statisticians or psychologists, right. and, the, and the armchair skeptics should stay out of it. That yeah. was your line then. Yeah, and, and a bad, the, bad, the bad, bad consequence of that belief system was that uh, I only, could, only knew myself and <laughs> perhaps later Jim Alcock mm -hmm. and maybe later Richard Wiseman there are no other people who are, have the background to criticize mm -hmm. it, no, who know the, the area, what, what they actually, these parapsychologists actually are doing, and who have the statistical and the experimental know-how mm -hmm. to do it. So every time that someone wanted a critic, they would call me, because once, once you become known as an as a, as a expert critic, mm. everyone, that's how you become an expert. Everyone now con comes to you. Right. And every time a newspaper, a, a TV station, anyone was going to do something, they'd always call me. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, I don't want to get involved <laughs> with it. They say, well, who, who should we, who can we, and I would think, I, well, I can't think of anyone else who has, so I'd better do it. Because of your position at the time That's that right. only a few qualified people exactly. could do it. Yeah. And unfortunately, even though I find it boring, I, I don't like reading <laughs> or paying attention to it because parapsychology research is the most boring thing there is in the world, believe me. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of guesses, uh, lots of data, and you do statistical testing. Mm -hmm. And, well, it, and then if it has any connection to the paranormal, I don't know what the connection would mm -hmm. be. So it's just dull. Well, you're, you're bringing up a couple things just then. One, this uh, uh, expert position that you and a couple others were in, and you said other skeptics were not qualified to engage in criticism. You've changed your mind on that. The other thing you just brought up is the notion of parapsychology being boring. Well, a lot of science is actually boring. A lot of uh, uh, you know, all due respect, we're at the National Science Foundation, but, you know, a lot of uh, research is on very small questions, but when you put it all together, it helps flesh out our understanding of, like, the picture of reality. So I'm not sure if a criticism of parapsychology is that it's boring. The implications of it are, in fact, very exciting. If we could prove that minds exist outside the body or that minds can uh, in some extrasensory sort of way, communicate or survive death, that's anything but boring. It's, it's, uh, it's the big questions. Well, uh, there's a lot of stuff you just brought up, uh, <laughs> which is important to make out. First of all, science is not boring because it's dealing with very specific questions. Mm -hmm. And these questions arise in, a, in, a, in the, what Kuhn called normal science. In, a, in doing science, you have a framework. Mm -hmm and you're testing a theory, and you have hypotheses that come out of that framework. And each experiment sometimes can challenge, bring results that challenge the framework or makes it interesting, mm -hmm. but you know exactly what's going on. But and you're saying in parapsychology that doesn't They don't exist. have a framework, yeah. they don't have any, they don't have a subject matter, they just have data. And if it has any collection to the paranormal, over 150 years, I've never seen them make any, show any connection. It's they just don't, a and they're not testing. It's hits or misses. It's yeah. not, you don't draw a direct line yeah. to paranormal or parapsychological belief from all the hits and misses. I don't, know, I don't know how anyone's ever demonstrated any connection or how getting results that are sometimes people guessing better than chance under some conditions, how that relates to anything paranormal or anything else. Uh, it could be thousands of reasons why you get differences from chance. Most of it is because if you, you know, it's data mining and stuff like that, mm. you know. Uh, but um, uh, there's been never any tie of a theory. They have what we call it, they, even parapsychologists, many of them recognize it, they don't have a positive theory of psi. Mm -hmm. When they do their research, uh, they have people guess or they do other things. They, what they have is you have a, a sets of alternatives and then you have what should be expected by chance. And... Um, they don't have any r rationale. They don't have a positive theory about what should what they should should be there. What the pattern of the results should be. Uh, so, what happens is what's called a patchwork quilt fallacy mm. that they they fall into, uh, which other scientists don't do because scientists do have a very specific hypothesis and there's got to be a specific pattern they're predicting. Parapsychologists, uh, if you get something that's different from chance. 
and you can't explain it by, right away, you can't explain it by some mundane, as they call it, mundane theory about the world that in terms of ordinary science, then they say, aha, mm. parapsychology. So it's a negative definition of mm -hmm. it. As a result, because it's negative, unlike other scientific testing and stuff like that, uh, there's no way for them to be wrong. Uh, uh, if anything happens that's above chance, even though it's not what they predicted, it's mm -hmm. still psi because mm -hmm. they have no way of telling you what's not psi. Yeah, you're raising a couple things there. What in philosophy of science is called the demarcation problem, what science and what isn't. You're saying parapsychology is not science because it doesn't play by the other rules of science. Uh, you're, and you're also saying it kind of that a lot of the evidence that people use in parapsychology to argue for its claims is kind of an argument from ignorance. It's saying, um, I, don't, I don't know how to explain this, therefore I know the explanation is paranormal, supernatural, something like that. Um, and so you say it's out of the bounds of science, but for 50 years you've, in a fair-minded way, looked into it. Uh, you know, you, you've garnered this reputation being open-minded, uh, you haven't found any evidence to support it. Um, it sounds like you're suggesting um, maybe that wasn't the right approach. Well, you've got a lot of things you, you attributed to me in all that. <laughs> I don't disagree with it, but I didn't say it so far. I haven't right. said those things yet. Mm -hmm. You've said them. Um, and we, we only have an hour and five minutes to see right. if I'm right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I did change my mind about a lot of things. Because up to 1950 was uh, the big, uh, the big uh, challenge where I took the Gansfeld experiments. Mm -hmm. Again, I was challenged, I was asked to evaluate for two different things, for the IEEE. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, for some reason, broke their, their rules and they actually published a long article by Robert John, pro-parapsychology, and that created a furor, so they decided to balance it with me. Mm -hmm. And so I was asked to do a tutorial on parapsychology for the IEEE journal, you know, mm -hmm. uh, something they don't usually deal with in that kind of a journal. Um, and um, to do that, and then I was also asked at another time, it was the 100th anniversary of the founding of the uh, Society for Psychical Research. In 1982 was the 100th anniversary, and uh, they held it at Cambridge, England, and they invited me to come as a skeptic to talk. So in both cases I said, okay, this is a good time for me to evaluate the status of parapsychology. You know, my first foray into doing this was back in 1957. Uh, mm -hmm. Now so it's 1980. Yeah. yeah, now it's 1982. Um, once and for all, maybe I should, try, but I can't, have, there's so much, so many papers by then in parapsychology, it, it was impossible for me to sit down and read them all. And then also, I, I didn't want to take a, a sample of papers because in any field, the majority of papers are, are, are mediocre at best. Mm -hmm. the, the top, uh, we evaluate the field in terms of the very top, their best output. So I wanted to be fair, and I want, so I went around and asked every major parapsychologist I could. I said, could you tell me what is the best evidence you have now, the best program in parapsychology the very best, and unanimously, almost unanimously, they said this Gansfeld experiments. Mm -hmm. So I then asked Ch Charles Arnerton, who published the first Gansfeld experiment, uh, if he could help me. Uh, I was, was interested in evaluating them, and he was all excited to have an outsider, you know, uh, to look into their what they he considered their best uh, research. And he said he would help me get every paper, even the unpublished ones. Mm. And ultimately, after three months, he sent me, my, I was teaching at Stanford at the time, I had their spook chair that, for that year. <laughs> and um, I received six, a stack of 600 pages. Wow. Uh, half of them um, uh, consisting of what he counted as 42 separate Gunsville experiments. That's an issue we won't get into now, but how, how you count what's an experiment, what's not, it was a big, can be a big issue. But there were 
fewer reports than that, but they covered, he, called, he counted as 42 separate experiments, and most of them were significant, okay? And uh, this is what I had to evaluate. It took me, um, ultimately, three months, my first go around. Actually, ultimately, it, went, it took up three, of my, three years of my life, most of my professional life, to go to, into this big battle, which culminated in a 1985 issue of the Journal of the Parapsychological Association, and they devoted the whole issue to this, contra this debate between Martin and myself. I had something like 50 pages or plus of my critique mm -hmm. of that Gansfield literature, and Arnerton had been given a year to go over that to, re to, to, make, a re to, to get, make his reply, and he had a long reply there. Uh, I thought his reply was, in many ways, stupid, he, and he didn't like my thing in the first place, obviously.